there. It should be fine, hopefully. Yeah, okay. There we go. Welcome back, Shiro. I had to reset. I'm trying to reset the screen. There we go. Hating everything right now because it was a fucking dream drop. Yeah, welcome back. I'm trying to fix up my stream because it's being super drop horrific. Because I love my life right now. So scared. Okay, there we go. Alright, chat's up for me, so I should be able to see most of this stuff. Can't stay along, my dad has a bike club thing. Well, are you sure you just are you sure you just don't wanna leave? It's fine if you can't stay. Kisses in the chat. Hi, Kisa. Oh, Beans and Diego. Hey, Shan. Hey, Diego. I can see that you have your caps on, bro. Alright. Yes, I can tell my stream is going to be affected. Okay, for those that are not like. So, I'm going to let everyone know that I might. I'm gonna delete the stream version, and I'm gonna at least upload the recorded version that's saved onto. That is gonna be saved. <laughs> yep. But anyways, yeah. So, just to let everyone know that I'm gonna at least re like delete the stream versions, and then I'm gonna re-upload re this. Because Caps is the best. I'm proud of you both. God damn it. So yeah. I'll just re-upload this. If you get a notification, or if y'all actually have notifications on here and or are sub to me, then go for you! But anyways, here we go. Everyone had Monokuma's pro uh, uh, Jesus, I'm hiccuping. Everyone heard Monokuma's uh, proclamation, and they were gathered by the red door. As soon as we were all there, Hello, hello, hello. He, he's multiple. Wrong. I mean, he's multiplied. Nope, not multiplication. It's just that way because of an illusion. <laughs> I'm moving so fast, it only looks like I've multiplied. <laughs> Can you... Oh, God, I coughed on my own spit. 
Can you guys believe which one is the real Monokuma? <sighs> Can we just get on the elevator already? Boy, that's a tough crowd. You're not playing along. Along, along! The music is a little too loud and I can't hear you. What? Albanese, is that true? Or, ah, fuck. I guess, uh... How could that be? Why is it? Um, I guess I could just lower it. Um, hmm. It's weird. Alright, well, whatever. I fixed it. I think. It should be fine. I think. Hmm. Along, along! Stop talking. We're not here to play with you. Okay. Okay, okay, fine. Hey! Then everyone's here and ready to go. Please board the pain train er elevator. I'll see you guys down there. <laughs> Let's go. Okay then. Shall we? <laughs> Please! Hold on! I'm not mentally prepared yet. What the heck? You'll never be mentally Hero, uh, do you wanna do any lines or I completely like my brain just clicked into like solo stream mode where I just talk to myself out loud and or record inside. I didn't know if you want to say anything yet. And there it goes the stream. Thanks to down like thanks to the frames. Thanks frames. You're the best piece of shit. Stupid stupid frames. Fight. Fight those stream. I mean the frames. It's a little, uh, it's a little out of my house. Okay, that's fine. Anyways, you'll never be mentally prepared. You can't run away anymore, he uh, anymore, hero. You're gonna pay for your sins. What the heck? I told you already, I didn't do it for serious. Hmm, that reminds me. Did you ever find the other costume or the note? <sighs> um, well, no, but... <laughs> How unfortunate. Then it would seem we have our culprit. <laughs> Ugh. Hey. This isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the courtroom. That's right. She's right. Let's get down there first. Then the story can really begin. 1v1, frames. Now 1v1, frame Shin will wreck you, mate. Uh, I hate the frame rate, but I'm gonna at least make up uh, and just have this re-uploaded. I'm still able to see chat normally, and Shiro is able to hear me normally, I think, or uh, unless I'm robotic. Shiro, let me know if I ever get robotic, because I know it's probably Skype, because it's very likely Skype, pain in the butt Skype, or someone else is on the like on the net using it, which no one does, because I have the ultimate power. Anyways, yeah, good idea. That's right. I have to... I have to do it. Oh my god, these frames. They're only robotic, sometimes. But that's a bad thing, Shiro. I can't let whoever killed Hifumi and Taka get away with it. For everyone who's still alive. And for the two that lost their lives. <laughs> The one who killed Hifumi and Taka? The one who killed two of our friends? The killer is... Someone right here. Alright. Well, let's talk to people around. Let's go with Ali. Just the worst. Let's hurry up and go, so we can make Hiro pay for his crimes. Damn. I don't like Motokuma's carefree attitude. Hmm. Were you, I mean, were you listening? Wait till we get to the courtroom to begin your arguing. Uh, what do you have to say, Toko? Mm, yes, yes. Come on, Big Mac, let's do it! Ooh. I feel sexual. I feel like I'm being harassed. Hey. I need it at all. The story begins when we get down there. It wasn't me, you gotta believe me! I give me a second. Alright. Mm. Okay. 
right. So I'm gonna save real quick just in case. Just in case I lose. And also let everyone remind I'm gonna at least have this re-uploaded. I mean the full version re-uploaded. If you see any delays or anything like that, it's just my internet's having shitty problems. I took a last deep breath and exhaled slowly. I began walking towards the elevator. Uh, toward the elevator. Once everyone was aboard, the doors closed on their own, and the steel box began to move. Beep, beep. The clunking of the elevator kept us company as we all fell further and further down. Oh, welcome back, Spring Tree. There was no going back. Until we settled all this, we couldn't go anywhere. I'm not sure how long it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. The elevator doors slide open, opening up onto a cruel fate. <laughs> when I see all you gathered together like this, I realize just how few of you there are. I mean, that there are left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. Just so only because of you. Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? What? What? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute. Come on. Stop goofing around and begin the begin the trial. <laughs> Don't rush me. Of course I'm gonna start. I'd never be like. Stay tuned for the action-packed clash trial after this commercial break. <laughs> I'd never hold out on you like that. Okay, let's begin and get your assigned get to your assigned seats. And so the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith, a deadly class trial. Do you want to save? Yes. Alright. Time to set some skills. Alright, the ones that are activated right now. Alright. Lost thought. Increase the time limit for each phrase effective during the class trial. Alright. So the only one I don't have, increase bullet capacity. Effective during the bullet time cost. I mean bullet uh, bullet time battle. Anyway, it lets you reload two bullets at once, effective during bullet time battle. Hmm. Okay. Attentive influence by two, lost in thoughts, cool composure. Okay. Melody's voice increases damage to opponent when a statement is destroyed, effective during a bullet time battle. Okay, we should be good. Let's see, it says we have all of them, so we should be also good for this battle. Alright, I'm ready. Wait. Okay, I'm just double checking that. Alright, Clash Trial! All rise! <laughs> Let's begin with a basic explanation of the Clash Trial. So, your votes will determine the results. Well, it looks like my expert commenting will have to be another day. We Don't worry, it'll be something. Let's begin the cl basic class show. If you oh. can figure out who, who done, done it, it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone what besides else? the, the blackened. blackened. And the, the one, one that deceived everyone, everyone else will, will graduate. graduate. Now, now then. then. To begin, begin with, we already know who did it. Oh, well, was that? What? It was Hero. He does not have an alibi for when the murders took place, and we found him in that suit. Hmm. Don't try and deny it. You killed them. First off, you're under the assumption 
that they did. You know, there's this thing called a scapegoat. I didn't. Someone knocked me out. I, I was asleep the whole time. I don't know anything about it. Shut your murdering mouth, murderer! Oh my God! Shut up, genocide chill. You're such a hypocrite. Who are you calling a murderer? I am sorry to say, hero, but we do have evidence. That's so weird in low frame. It's pissing me off. Okay, let me do something real quick. Ooh, all right. Is that it? No, I was What to say other than that? I'll do what I can. Anyways. Blueprint for the suit. Parts we assume were used to build it, and all of it was Under found the assumption, in your though. room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. But your door was open. But his door was open. It points to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. With under the assumptions. How many times do I have to tell you? I... I... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Poor Hero. Is Hero really the killer? Or... Before anything else, we have to make clear... I mean, make that clear. Alright. Make your argument! He, yeah, like, Yasuhiro's mess... Yeah, message. Everything we found in your room. Wait. I need to remember which button. I forgot the buttons again. Shit. So silencer to silence the the, the statements. Fire the bullets. Select the bullet. Concentrate. Okay. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff! It's not true! It's a conspiracy! Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second! Okay. Alright, I missed the actual one. Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof- That's not no. right! Break. Okay. Are you sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. Hmm? It's the note that Hero wrote, asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego disappeared. The handwriting's obviously different, wouldn't you say? When you compare it to the blueprints. Oh yeah, they're scribbles. There's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Hmm. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. Yeah, but without a reason well, to do it. The differences are bigger than that, I think. Come on! I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. Which is true. So, Makoto, are you saying you don't think Hero's the culprit? Not at all. And he is not the only one. I think Hiro is innocent as well. Good call, Byakuya. Then who was in that robo-justice suit? Is it like Hiro said? Was there really someone running around in a second Not suit? Not a second suit, he was just being messed a with. A suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. Oh, really? What? Huh. And of course he passes, like, he passes it off to me. Who was in the Robo and of course Justice he passes suit? It off to me. That my tongue is tied. The suspicious individual. The Illuminati. God damn it. It was Hero. Oh Other than Hero, I can't think of anyone else it could have been. Obviously, he was the one in that particular suit, and we never found any kind of second suit. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense! You just said Hero didn't do it! Well, because there's a lot of reasons why he didn't do it. It makes perfect sense. 
Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. Yeah, we were under the assumption because we were only given so a statement. So what you're saying is... That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice suit. Mm, it was all a distraction. What? Now that's a bold assumption! And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that... Uh, it's bothering me. The frames, why? Frames, why must you betray me? I'm so sad right now. That's good. It's one thing versus another. What? Oh, that's Alright, it's saying it's good now. Nope, oh, never mind. What the hell? It keeps turning on and off. I have to change stuff, but whatever. Anyways. If only frames and the internet existed in the world without lag. That's called a fantasy world. Or Mega Man. Because seriously, how are all these robots able to teleport and stuff like that without any issues? Anyways. Of course. There's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Mm. Hey, stop trying to boss us around! Stop being a bitch. All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? Okay, what's the clarification at this point? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. Ah. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? Yep, not a problem. Uh, the things that were used, uh, it was, where is it? Oh, right here. I got it. Here it is. There's still one more thing. The things that were used to move Tonka's body. I got it. I got it. They were a dolly and a tarp, right? Hmm. What's with that attitude? So, let's see if I can He's explain. purposely calling him out. What the hell? Taka's body disappeared from the equipment room. And then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? Hmm. It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. Exactly. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. Mm. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Okay, that explains the tarp and the dolly. Easy. To move uh, Hifumi's dead body. Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. But when the body disappeared, so did the doll. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the doll. In other words, you think they used the dolly to move the body, am I right? Mm. But are you sure you are not mistaken? 100%. 
Uh-huh. What? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. Is it not possible that it was in the repository all along and you simply didn't realize it? She's raised an objection. How do you respond? Jesus, Bianca, yeah. why do you constantly have to badger me? Jeez. There is no shame in being wrong. And nobody expects much from you anyway. Bitch! You're hiding shit. Now it has to be you because you're the one that's literally dogging me on as well. Thank you. There's enough evidence to prove that. I hate the light. I hate it too. She's good. We have all accepted the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you. Jesus, rip me a new asshole, why don't you? Wow, I never had anyone sound so nice while being so mean. But maybe I can change your mind. If I can just explain to them why the dolly had to been moved from the equipment room to the res repository. A new element has been added to bullet time. Would you like to hear more? Ooh, what's this? Let's talk about reloading. Starting the next bullet, like, next bullet time, we're gonna add one more, um, ingredient to the recipe. On the bottom of the screen, underneath the tempo marker, you'll see your, like, ammo count. Up until now, you, like, there hasn't been a limit on how you destroy your opponent's statements. But, for now, just lock on and press the Y it won't be enough to handle them. Now it'll cost you one bullet to destroy a single remark. Once you run out of bullets, you can't destroy any more statements, no matter how locked on you are. However, you can reload by pressing X. Just like locking on, you'll have to press the X button in time with the tempo marker. Basically, just remember X net like the X button now, like has a function along with A and Y. A E D. You will automatically reload at the start of fever time, and your ammo will not decrease. But if your actions, I mean, if your action difficulty is set to gentle, you won't have to reload it at all. In case you can ignore everything, in that case, you can just ignore everything I just said. Well then, good luck, have fun. Wow, I'm actually having a fight with her. All right, this is the first time. Moment of truth. You had it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. Away with you. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. You had it wrong. I cannot agree. Ow. You are Ow. Okay, I gotta double check something. Lock on. How do you activate? Oh. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. Away with you. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst, you miserable wretch. You miserable wretch. You had it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your Tempo worst. up. Away with you. You miserable wretch. Alright, final strike. I cannot agree. What? Ah. F I cannot agree. You are a fool. Lies will get you nowhere. All right. There we go. I cannot agree. Okay. Just got to wait it out. What? Do your worst, you miserable wretch. 
You have it wrong. I cannot agree. Oh, did I lose? What? Nobody believes me. Nobody wants to hear what I have to say. Wow, this is the first time losing. Uh oh. We have already come to an end of a debate. Well then, the class trial is officially adjourned. Now it's time to reveal who's the blacken. <laughs> Appeared the one with the most vote. I mean, votes is Makoto. However, Makoto is not the black and too bad. Looks like the real killer gets to graduate. Congratulates to them. On the other hand, everyone else must be punished. Is, is this really the end for all of us? <sighs> but I have to say, I need to give it another I shot. To give up yet. I can't give up now. Ooh, that was an ability. All right, new element has been added. Absolutely. All right, so I have to be careful. You have it wrong. I cannot hurt you. You are a fool. So pathetic. Okay. Okay. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. Away with you. You miserable wretch! I cannot agree! You are a fool! Lies will get you nowhere! Do your worst, you miserable wretch! You have it wrong! I cannot agree! You are a fool! So perfect! Lies will get you nowhere! Do your worst! Away with you! You miserable wretch! Come on. I am really sucking up. There. I cannot agree. This should prove it. Oh. What? Why did that stop it? I pressed it before and then it was like nope. If you're asking for proof that the dolly moved, I have it right here. All right. Well, here goes nothing. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheel's tray. Right? It's silly that, like, they give you that option whenever you don't want to anyways, period. The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out of the room. Which is really unprofessional and stupid, and the but whatever. Dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. Hmm. <laughs> Jeez, does Celeste really hate me that much? No, it just proves that she's the killer. Well, anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then what kind of robot is it? It's not that, you fool. It's. Uh... I'm not sure that really matters. I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. Oh! Oh! That makes sense. If I look how the body was moved, it'll clearly, uh, it'll be clear the why the people the suits couldn't have done it. What does that mean by that? Alright. I figured it out. Make your argument. Robot Justice costume. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment room. And yep. from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? Yeah, the culprit wrapped the body in the tarp, then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, right? Now, keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. Well, yeah, but even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend over. Got it. No, that's wrong. And that's a contradiction by itself. 
okay. You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? What do you mean? <laughs> think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together. Remember? Da -da -da -da. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you you got anywhere in this thing. I'm I'm telling you, it wasn't me. me, 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 me. And not to mention, you totally can't bend as at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. Gotcha. When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Meaning, if you would have stepped in any blood, wouldn't see it. And to be able to use the dolly without a handle would be impossible. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. Yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Exactly. Well, what's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? Running with gas. When you can't even see your feet, you really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm, it's totally impossible. Not that I can say for sure myself. On top of that, if you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? There's absolutely no chance the costume was able to take it off. Because you can't take it off by yourself. I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember... I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it, like, get it off. A little help? Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? I didn't make the stupid freaking thing. There's a collapse on the back that keeps you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. I don't really have, like, we don't really have a choice. Let's help him. That's true. It seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without, without help. help. Then you really can't take it off by yourself? Yes! Hero wasn't just making it up? Yes! Jesus Christ, woman, listen! Of course I wasn't making it up. If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Exactly. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right! So, it's really, really true that Robo Justice couldn't have moved the Oh body. my god, yes, you to fool. Be clear, Whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? A hundred percent, yes. No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? Well, technically... Hmm. You That's all true. got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo Justice? If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? That's true. Shit. I Besides, mean, based off of the perspective. Do you remember what the now deceased Hifumi said? I know. How did you get hurt? That guy hit me. What guy? Robo Justice. Er, that's what I decided to call him just now. Wait. So long as those facts exist, how did you know the that? The proper conclusion is beyond question. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. Not it true. Was hero, without a doubt. With under the assumption it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be right. Oh, God damn it, Aoi! You're stupid as hell. <laughs> Hold on a second. It's still far too early to reach that conclusion. Mm. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? Mm -hmm. Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, 
The truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. <laughs> that was Maybe a good we'll book. uncover something new. Oh, hey, what do you know? I think the frame drop stopped. Oh, wow. It stopped. Neat. Someone. Someone finally gave up. Good. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! Mm, shut up, Genocide Jill. I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. Cool. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Mm hmm. But at least the good news is, stream's at least running back 100%. No signs of frame drops. Shiro's able to see it in a like, somewhat decent rate. We're good now. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. That's also true. All right, then. Let's take another look back at what happened. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina, Kyoko, and myself. Yep, that's all true. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up. Let's celebrate so the special occasion. Let's all get sugar cookies. I want to go buy sugar cookies after the stream. <laughs> and I'm actually, uh, I am, I live close by um, a, a store that actually is open 24 hours, so I could easily go buy some cookies. And eggnog, my addiction. Help, I have a problem. Anyways. That was around 8 a.m. Okay, so it's just basically the order of time. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko, Kyoko went, went missing. missing. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room mm. and quickly came to get Makoto and me. Yep. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. Mm. I know it was an hour because I remember being attacked a little after 7. That was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. Yeah, but the door was shut for one. Two, if it would have at least, the photo itself would have at least shown something close to grabbing. As it turns out, it was Robo Justice. It also soon became clear that this same Robo Justice had abducted Hifumi. Mm. We were soon joined in our search by Byakuya and Toko, and then went on to find Hifumi in the library. Hmm. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. Hmm. But not long after leaving the nurse's office... What's wrong? I saw a shadow, something moving around at the top of the ups I mean, at the top of the stairs. When Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. Which there's a con like which we have to go t uh, to an inter like intervention. Shin, eggnog is slowly taking me over to again. Yeah, that's why you have to appreciate it before you lose the ability to buy it. I'm a I'm probably gonna buy it as soon as I'm done with this stream. Shit. And soon after that, I saw someone moving around on the third floor, and I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. You screamed, actually. Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange costume man. He ran up as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. Well, TBH. Even if, even if you blocked it, technically he would be able to hit you. And then... Whatever. Huh? What was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been... Hifumi! He's in the nurse's office! This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Mm. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office, while Sakura, Yakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi, dead. Pretty much. 
And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. Sadly. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time. Because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. Yep, yep. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office. But right after we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived after us. And she told us something very surprising. Hifumi's body has disappeared. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room. I'm gonna double check someone. Uh, damn it, I can't see buttons. Oh. Uh, auto. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating all this or something? But when we got there, we discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. Or was he? Which is where we rediscovered... Oh, was he? I think that about covers it. Pretty much. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Okay, well, if that's true, then, then what? what? Rather than a single series of events, oh. okay. I think we have Flash to consider you. each murder a separate situation. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. The contradictions uh, hidden in what happened to Taka. In order to uncover the truth of this case, I have to find them no matter what. Nice, here we go. Now, make your argument. Alright, Monokuma file number three. Wait, what? So. Wait, what? Uh... I wonder if he died before. Okay, I'm gonna double check something. I feel like I'm forgetting a button. Firing truth bullet, loading bullet, which quick select. Truth bullet flashback. Hmm. Silencer. Weak spot holds on the way, is a weak spot as a temper. Or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. What order? Come on, Makoto, don't scare me like that. Oh. Oh, the. Oh. Shoot. Oops. Shit. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before he boomed it, or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. You sure? Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammer 3, while Taka's right. death came from a swing of So Justice we just had to exorb it. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. Alright. I got something. Justice Hammers were numbered, but... Were they really used in that order? So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he got what the hat that was... We already know what order they were killed in. Taka Not so fast. Last. Ah, oh, God damn it! It's true that he fooled me. Oh my God! Are you serious? So it's obvious how came after. 
No. Regardless, I wonder if or perhaps it was us. We already know Taka came. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammer. It's true that he Fumi was killed, but while Taka's dead. Come on. So it's obvious Taka came. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he got or perhaps it was after. We already know what order they were killed in. No, they weren't. No, That's what? wrong. Got you. Hold on. There's no reason to assume that the hammers were used in the same order as their numbers. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. Yep, yep. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the hammers were used in order, but in reality, Taka was killed before Hifumi? Okay, yes, yes. Then. Let's see the proof. Damn it. Evidence that proves Taka was killed before Hifumi. There's something that relates to what time he must have died. Alright, let's do it. Concentrate, Hangman's Gambit. I got it. Taka's wristwatch. Yep, yep. See? Look. It broke with the hands pointing just past six o'clock. So it must same have that. gotten broken when he was attacked by the killer. Because as of last night. Hey, you, how long are we gonna keep like how long are you gonna keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced the air as he started pointing at his wrist wristwatch. It's almost ten o'clock, you know that? Bedtime for all for all little boys and girls. Okay. So if it wasn't broken after six last night, then he must have been attacked around six this morning. Okay, the order. And that would be his official time of death. But if that's true, then he was killed well before Hifumi. Exactly. And before Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around seven. That's right. Taka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. That simple fact slipped past all of us. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. That's exactly why the culprit wrote the numbers on each hammer and had them increase in size. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we'd easily make that wrong assumption. Now, if Taka was killed around 6, then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the window. Because when he was killed, we hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. Oh, that's true, actually. That may be true in the case of Taka's murder. But all of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's death. That's right. With him, at least, we're all safe. Hmm. Except for one. Okay, we already got this point. When we heard Hifumi screaming, we were all together. Except for Hiro and Kyoko. Then we all ran down to the nurse's office, and that's where we found his body. That's totally true! We're all in the clear! <sighs> God damn it. Oh, I know! They must have recorded him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on! That doesn't work. Hero. If that's true, where's the tape? I don't know. Don't just go making stuff up! <sighs> Anyway, we all have rock-solid alibis for when we heard Hifumi scream. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. Maybe. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Hina and I were in the bathroom together, while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? 
And then, there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time! Which is also true. Wait, then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then! Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. Besides, I didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared, so they most certainly could have done those things. So, with under the assumption. Mm. So what now, Kyoko? For you now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. Okay. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. In hmm. particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. That's true. He was a big boy. That's true. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste said, It could have not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. If her timing is actually correct, you know. But, okay, yeah, we get most of it. It would seem so. His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. Unless the body wasn't dead. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third in that short amount of time? Oh, man, yeah! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Well, what if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. Oh. Huh? The, the dead body m moved on its own? <laughs> no! Not another... No! I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is... Hifumi was never dead. We thought Hifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality, he was still alive. He was... alive? Are you saying was. Hifumi wasn't carried out of the nurse's office, but simply walked out on his own? But I mean, we found his body. He was dead. Perhaps he was simply playing Plain. dead. That... it isn't possible. It is, actually, my dear. The idea Hifumi was still alive. Is it really possible? Alright, here we go. Broken wrist, wrist watch. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. With under the assumption. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Here we go. Oh, does that do say shit? shit. I, th I fucked up. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you've heard the body discovery announcement, along with the Hifumi's dead body had been found. No! And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery? Damn it. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the found. nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually No. It is impossible. Hifumi was dead. Without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. 
And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Ah. Damn it, I know Are how those. saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse, there's a chance he was at. No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead. And you know that half. Surely you heard the body discovered Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Oh. <sighs> Shit. Um... Shoot. No, I'm about to lose. Again. Shit, this is bad. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office... There's a chance he was actually still alive. No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead. With and you know that. Right. Okay, I'm, I think I'm fucking something up. Uh, weak spots. Loading truth bullets. Hifumi's dead body had been found, and that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure Shit. that maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery? Are you saying that when we first there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And okay, I'm trying to figure something out. What the flying fuck? I'm confused. Uh... Hmm. I think. Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with Kifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery? Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? Shit. No, I fucked up. Shoot. And I lost. Shit. Yeah. I've, I've been doing terribly in this trial. No. Is, is this... Yes. I refuse to give up yet. Come on, give me another go. Thank God, I'm not an instant game over. Come on. Make your arguments. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement dead was made. Dead body had been found. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Wait. Are you saying Someone that when we discovery. first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, Oops, there's a shit. chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. Oop. That's wrong! That's wrong. 
See, I was I was thinking the complete the opposite way of the phrasing. That was made really intended for Hifumi. Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. Which also makes right. sense. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. Well, so no, there's I heard. a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. Or Taka. Yeah, take it, take it, take it. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. Exactly. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. What do you say, Monokuma? Any, Any comment? comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. Just but what it. I can say about the body discovery announcement is, is that... that? It's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. No, actually, that was plenty. Hmm? Huh? We said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time. Which means... Oh! Even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. So he can't, he doesn't if say it twice. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. Twice. The, the second body announcement discovery, I mean discovery announcement. First time it played, we found each body in the nurse's office. Uh, found each body in the nurse's office and the equipment room. And on the second one, when... Fumi died, actually? Oh, we discovered it, actually. We heard it a second time in the repository when we rediscovered the two bodies. Ding dong, ding dong. A body has been discovered! After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin. Seem weird at the time, but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us. Doesn't exactly. It? Mm -hmm. Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually 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 being dead. discovered for the first time. Well, that too. So, when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Mm. Meaning, he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. Absolutely. That's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. Okay. Oh, 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 I know, I know! Okay. Even the the worst logic I have ever heard. You're stupid. But honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Oh, there is, my friend. Okay, then. Let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. Alright. There was... There has to be proof that shows Hifumi and I, like, Hifumi was still alive. I have to find it and show it to them. All right, here we go. Make your argument. Hifumi's glasses. Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office. Yep. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared. <laughs> And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. You're wrong. No, it's wrong. Gotcha.
In fact, there was one clear difference between Hufumi and the nurse's office in the repository. That was? His glasses. Hmm. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in? Hmm. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. The evidence I found in the trash can in the nurse's office is this one, the cleaning cloth. It. it was a glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Kifumi's glasses clean. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? Mm. And whose digital camera was it? Kifumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Piggle. From Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Kifumi would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... Toko? I wouldn't be caught dead in a tacky piece of garbage like that. And he flew me. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. That's weird. And there's no question. It belonged to Hifumi. Mm. Mm. So what you're saying is... He played dead. <laughs> what I'm saying is... The blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, it does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. Yes. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. And it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? But then, if he was just pretending to be dead... What was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out. So he just dumped it everywhere! I mean... But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done! God, what an idiot! Leaving off evidence. If Kumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. Alright, and... da 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 Hifumi! It could only have been Hifumi. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Well, after the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means, when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, Someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead. And when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. Which is a weird thought if you think about it. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. Exactly. But 
That means he took part in the murders. I, I just can't believe it. Yeah. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? Please do. There's more? There is. Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. Jeez, Sherlock Holmes. You know Holmes what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? Mm. And that is this. No, not that, not that, not that. What he Fumi had. I got, I got it. it! You're talking about the note he Fumi had hidden away, aren't you? Hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. Which is weird. What? In his yeah. pants? Yes, his pants. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. I found out, like, hole. Oh, maybe we can use it to escape. Makoto, I mean, Monokuma can't find it out. So don't tell anyone else. Let's meet up in the equipment room yes. at 6 a.m. That's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Oh. Wait, this one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. Exactly. See, then this note isn't the same one Hero got. It's not the same? Mm -hmm. In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hero. And that is... And that person could only have been... Taka. That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but Hifumi had that letter, right? Whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Happy! What? Um, just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Happy is Hifumi, right? Oh, yes. Yes! Why must you ruin it every time? <laughs> Man, Genocide Jack is seriously scary, but still. I can't let her get I can't let her get to me. Alright. Time to prove her wrong. Say to me. 6 a.m. I believe. The okay. time doesn't matter. It does matter, you. Wait. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. Uh oh. I have no what idea. I mean, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I want to stab you seriously, adorably serious face off. <laughs> Shit. Oh, I made a mistake. Eh. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. It does. Oh, son of a... Mm. Gotta stay calm. But remember what the... What time did it... 6 a.m. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. Does. No. That's wrong. No, there absolutely is a connection. No matter what. What the hell are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about, Willis? The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. AKA the broken wrist. He's already wrist proven watch. that <laughs> using his wristwatch. Mm. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Exactly. Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, 
Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that. No further objections. <laughs> God damn it. Then someone used that note to trick Taka. I'm not gonna lie, Genocide Jill's like that awkward cute. <laughs> I don't know why. Cobra really is a cold-blooded monster. Cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. Burr, burr, burr. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Stuffed down his pants, no less. Jesus. Most to hide likely, the evidence. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead. Show us. Of course. Of course, Bianca. You, you have to call me out. Every goddamn time. Fine. I'll show you what I mean. Take this. I got it. When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi. Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note. Yup, they're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from its death grip. Leaving behind only one yeah, rigor mortis. small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In Makes fact, sense. he was behind the whole thing. No. In fact, he's, he's too still stupid. Alive. Sorry. No. no. He, he was dead. It was announced. When we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. Except for that few the seconds. The second body like. discovery announcement proves that. So then, who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind. The true killer. He was killed in the repository. So he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So, he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Jesus! I mean, Ooh, yes? I walrus! Is that an insult? Anyway, I mean, when they were killed bothers me too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. Really? And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi. The weapon? Yeah, because I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. Both bopped in the head and but pretty just much dropped three dead. And four were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? No signs of blood. So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers and kill, kill Hifumi, Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. Which wouldn't work exactly. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Okay, see, that's the harsh part that you say. Hell yeah, yeah, it's packed in there good and tight. Ugh, God. He's right, not though. Much, though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Easy. Personally, I haven't a clue. 
so which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms, too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then... Uh... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? Not exactly. I mean, so well, then, the exact what type was of used item. to kill Hifumi? The weapon that was actually used to kill Hifumi. Alright, the whole picture is surrounding. It won't become clear until we figure it out. Somehow, I have to find the truth. Okay, here we go again. God, this is intense. Make your argument. Spotless hammer. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Mm -mm. Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Not that. Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! Check Jesus. out murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info! Oh my god, well, Jesus. One thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers! No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. Because that makes no sense. The murder weapon wasn't a Justice Hammer at all. No, it, it was, was something completely, completely different. different. But seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Oh yeah! Because there is still All others left. All the hammers left. in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. Hmm. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. So, I think in a nutshell, whoever made the Justice Hammers used those as a basis for their design. But to use it as a cover-up item, to make it look if like that was true, used. That would explain the Monokuma Files note about the wounds being similar. Mm -hmm. So but not saying it's the Taka's same. Body to the repository, same, like where the, someone the then used the hammer to kill him. Whoever did that is the true killer. The one who Fumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. Okay. We talked about this, did we not? True. But there's still something contradicting. I mean, I guess it's true, yet it's not. Okay. At least that's what I thought at first, but... Alright, here we go. Spotless hammer. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. Or under the assumption of one. Explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Thanks. I needed to borrow that. We can at least say there's no chance two people work together on this? Based no, that's not true. That been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true. Take this! No, no that's no. wrong. Great! <laughs> Since there were two okay, murders, 
it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. Hmm. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. But there was two. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The Jesus payoff Christ, for working Makoto. together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in the scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. It's possible. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. God damn it, Gisa. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. But there was two. Instead, each person killed someone, creating, creating two, two separate, separate incidents. incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. Exactly, Makoto, my boy. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then, to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Mm -hmm. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. Okay, something very simple. <laughs> Someone That's only Heartless could do. Awful! How could anyone be so cruel? Easy. So, I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... odd. An effort made to convince us the two murders were the same. That it was the main characteristic this time. Kyoko must have noticed the fact from the very beginning. Which is why she said not to look at this as a series of connected events, but of entirely separate incidents. Incidences. Kyoko is really amazing. Oh. When to think about it, she's almost too amazing. <laughs> Like, it's almost unnatural how good she is at this. I understand how an accomplice could be involved, but then who was the one pulling Hifumi's strings? It was. That's problem numero uno right now! The true killer manipulated Hifumi to carry out a number of actions, and in the end, murdered him. In the debates up till now, the way the case has unfolded, when you consider it all that? There's really only one person who seemed to fit. Only one person that controlled Hifumi so easily. And that person is you! Celeste! Here's my answer! It was Celeste. Ah, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? Well, first off, you're the one that was making I accusations. Really this kind of joke. A okay. joke? I wonder. Same here. So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. Two reasons. The You're... idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him. Ooh, she sounds upset. That I would go within ten feet of that shit from brain, that lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! Oh! Uh, 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 -moi. Just to be clear, her accent's fake. to support it. Her accent's fake. So. It That's is. hilarious. Throughout the investigation, <laughs> there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. Exactly. Good call, Byakuya. Was... Uh... Oh, encountering the, sus this, uh, the suspicious the individual. The behavior they had in common this has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit. Doesn't he? Hmm. The 
only ones who ever actually saw Robo Justice firsthand were Celeste, Celeste and he flew me. AKA the only two the people are talking now. Wow, fuck you too. Sorry. So sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi I want to be shocked eyes on the Kisa, costumed though. individual. You stab me. If we accept nope. that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't Kidding. help but suspect Jokes. what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? Absolutely. After taking Hifumi to the <laughs> nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? I saw a shadow. Something moving around at the top of the stairs. Mm -hmm. We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Have seen. But Next, that could have honestly to draw been us a all to the physics lab up on the third floor. She let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Here we go. Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, a strange costumed man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. With under the assumption that we could trust her, though. Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. Exactly. Huh? What was that? Uh, like, that came from downstairs. It must have been... He fooled me! He's in the nurse's office! This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. It was to get us to divide into two groups. Mm -hmm. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste exactly. was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Oh yeah, she did. She did. Then why don't we split up into two groups? I'll lead the hunting party. That seems much more interesting. Very well, then Makoto and Hina, you come with me to the nurse's office. I will, I will leave the capture of the suspicious individual to Toko, Byakuya, and Sakura. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. Hmm. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. <laughs> Hey. Uh, uh? That was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? Jesus. It was your way of telling him, we are on the third floor. Everything's going according to plan. Oh my god, that actually makes sense. Why else really think would you let out one? a scream that could have carried across the sea? <laughs> god damn it. I just realized another strange <laughs> thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead, Oh, poor Hifumi. I certainly was not expecting this. I did not imagine that Hifumi would be murdered. Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. Exactly. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. Zero. I, I don't believe it. Everything, the whole thing was one big act. I'm not gonna Hina, lie, she has a good poker you were with face. Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait! Then that was. Yep. She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. And? Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together, and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Hmm? Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but... 
Looking back, I can say that that one little slip up was your undoing. Eh? What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. Wait, what did she say? They must have been like, they must, uh, must be really enjoying this, enjoying the sight of us standing around fi frightened and confused. We're all going to die here. We're all going to die just like those guys died. Wait! I remember Why didn't I notice that? that? Too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Because. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. How did she know about the first body? I then didn't Makoto notice that. Then showed up and wow. told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Huh. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Wow, I didn't even notice that tiny little detail, though. Now, the entire hmm. time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. But she knew about two Think people about being dead. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. God damn it. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Yuki said Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. What is he, a, like, a leading to? A, a leading to? Simple. The words, those guys. Alright, Monokuma number three. All I said was... They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. Okay. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. Oh wait, no, and shit. That is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Exactly, so strange. When she said that, she would only have known about Kifumi's death. With that in mind, what seems strange about what she said is simple. All I said was, we must really be enjoying the sight of us. They must be, because we are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like the... No, it's wrong. Exactly. We caught you in your lie. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just those like those guys died. Guys. Okay, or just... Just like those when she Whatever. said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Gotcha. Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. <laughs> eh? You all have such vivid imaginations, you know that? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what eh? about the picture I took? How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on, and then, then she used the camera's timer to... No. ...to set up the picture. Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus... I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. Nope, nope. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? 
but someone could fit inside of it. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? Or is it the other what way did around? What possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No, there is no other explanation. Jesus, she's just so one mindset. Other explanations? This is like on a set path. It wasn't a picture of the suspect dragging you free away. I mean, if it wasn't. The only other possibility is if Fumi was this, are dancing, they've been drinking. Hifumi's dragging the suspect away. I got it. It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. Exactly. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! So, everyone would throw you under the train, TBH. You're pretty dumb. <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Why do you say that, though? Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous. Is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. Eh? Celeste thinks she can prove there was no way Hifumi was dragging the suspect away. But is that really possible? Alright, here we go! Robo Justice costume, Yasuhiro's message, Robo Justice blueprints. You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out! Then you just creeped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight! You tried to make me look like the bad guy! Like I said, ridiculous. You say As that. You can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. No, that's no, wrong. wrong. Because the costume makes you stand up straight. Well, more or less the costume it's stole no. and how it's built. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. Because how it was structurally because made. Because that Robo Justice suit had a certain characteristic. It was kind of built stiff. You totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like it's pretty obvious oversight. You can't bend at all. That's right! They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. Mm-hmm. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. It was purpose. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> well then. I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? Exactly. <laughs> huh? um. Don't make me laugh, you idiot! What do you mean, checkmate? Whoa! Celeste? Oh, there's a real voice. You want to cram me into your little guilty box? Well, there's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? Yasu Hiro. Hey Hifumi, who was it? Who tried to kill you? Who killed me? That's right, I remember their name. Yasu Hiro. When we asked him who had attacked his answer was quite clear, was it not? Ooh, she's going high pitch. He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro. Yes, 
hero. In other words, Yasuhiro Hagakure! Ooh. Right. But my name isn't really Yasuhiro. It's actually Taro. Wait, confusing what? statements don't make any sense. You're only Wait. making things more complicated. He did say Yasuhiro. Wait. That still doesn't make sense. Wait. Uh, that would be... Because he refers to everyone by their last name, no matter what. Because we don't know Celeste's last name! Oh, that makes sense now. What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! I'm not gonna lie, I really like... I like Celeste's voice actor. Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. He referred to us at... How did he refer to each of us? Uh, he said people's last oh names. God. That's right! Our last names! He called us all by our last names! Mm -hmm. Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. <laughs> Too many times, so actually. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name. Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just his first name. Mm -mm -mm. He was really <laughs> polite. It was weird. Don't talk. <laughs> Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. He's a little too polite, in my opinion. But he must me. have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? Exactly. But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Oh wait, no it does! Oh, no, hold on. There's one person it could apply to. One and, and only that's one. that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. Mm-hmm. Her first and last. What did you just say? To think... You'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit! Come on! Enough with your idiotic <laughs> blather! Yasuhiro is the loser's name! Do I look like a loser to you? <coughs> You're about to lose. Do I? What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Jesus, okay, calm down. Listen. What's your real name? Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? Celeste still won't give up, so then... I have to do something to make her accept it. Alright. Game time. And this should do it. Everyone's at least going to agree on this last point. And that's the e-book. I mean, the e-handbook. That's gonna at least win us this fight. Hifumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name. Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name... Celestia Ludenberg, God damn it! Jesus! How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. You, you have a good poker face. You have no way to contradict me. Oh, wait. Your meaningless words tire me. Please stop wasting my time. Damn it. Shoot. I pressed the wrong button. You pressed the wrong button! The Fumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer if there's one person it would have to be you, Celeste. How many times I, I just want to listen to this and then I'll fast forward to it. Celeste, you loaded for God damn it! Jesus, you don't sound like that. No! Pretending? And since you have no way to contradict me. Nope! There is! And that's game! That's it! The handbook! <laughs> what?! Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots the up. The real right? name. 
Monokuma told us all about it before. This handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life, so don't lose it. When you start it up, it will display your name. Always make sure you have the right one. Now, this is not your everyday notebook. It has so many more uses than that. So all we have to do is check our handbook, and that'll clear up everything. Okay. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. And that's how you lose, Celeste. That's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. Oh, but that kind of makes you suspect. Can I mean, you please just tell us what really happened. Please, just tell us. Cause you already lost. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Oh my god. Because. 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 I'm because, waiting. Because, because, until the game's over, you never know what might happen. Jesus. Fine then. Let me settle it. Now for the Let last go thing. Over the case again, from the beginning. And shed light on all your Now crimes. here is the true game over. And that'll bring everything to an end. I'm sorry, Celeste, but you truly lost this game. Closing statement. Alright. First thing first. figure out something. See, it has to be... This! Alright, moving up next. It has to be the clock, depending on the time, because they... They tricked Yasuhiro into coming over. That. And then... Hero's a little bit distraught. They at least sedate him, more or less. And then... And killer had to hold the camera to at least take the fake photo. Let's see, in Act 3... It had to be the watch. A.K. Taka, whenever he was super impatient. And with how everything went, Hifumi went through with it. Hifumi, why? Why killed someone in cold blood? And Hifumi went through with it. Killing Taka. Goes through with it. The murderer at least shows me. I'm so upset right now. Ifumi fakes it. Plays it off and has the blood looking like it what it's supposed to be. <sighs> has the justice hammer at least get some little bit of blood, so it's two, then three. They end up finding a fake body. Jesus, so detailed with Sakura, though, I'm not gonna lie. Hifumi at least grab it, like, grabbing a certain, eye, like, the dead body of Taka. Hifumi. Why were you so obedient? Love makes people do crazy stuff, especially Super Saiyans. God damn it. True. Fumi pushes the doll, even though there was a handle with it. I don't know what happened to the handle. And without further ado, that does it. Fumi, why? He was stupid, but I enjoyed his comedy. Well, this case is over. What happened? In the first act. Before anything, the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder. And that person was... 
Kifumi. Kifumi. With an accomplice, the killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. All right, in Act Two. Tick tock. First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. That someone they met with was Hero. The murderous duo intended to pass Hero off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him, they dressed him up they like a fool, him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the Robo Justice suit. Next, Ifumi positioned himself to make it look like Robo Justice was attacking him. While the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. Wait, it took more than one though? They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hira. Which is true. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. Like it's high school all over again. Poor Hero. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. Okay, first off. Everyone would fucking notice Hiro, uh, Hifumi. No, Taka! Fucking popping his skull open. Hifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. I like Taka. The He's murder my weapon favorite. was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason Hammer Number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. Mm -hmm. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack story. You know, pretty easy way to the convince The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Hifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds. That the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that. But yep. we were played like fools. Act five. While we did that, we left Kifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. He took a blood packet from the refrigerator and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. And then dropped the hammer to make it look like it. He let out a scream to draw us back. And when we returned, that's what we found. Wait, where's the blood packet, though? That's my question. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. Act 6. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up, and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office. And once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. He wrapped Taka's body in a tarp and used the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. The 
he was so Even happy the about it. Didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Okay, getting rid of any casualties. Or, you know, just anyone that would snitch. Their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is... Celeste. Oh, flowers. Oh, so anime. So anime. So anime. This is, wow, Kisa, you're a piece of shit. Celeste, sorry, you lose. And that's game complete. I lost. I lost. <laughs> when was the last time I was forced to utter such words? They hang heavy around my neck. Then you admit it? You're the killer? That's weird. It keeps popping in and out. Listen to you, trying to take charge. As if you're my private instructor. I, Celestia Ludenberg. Actually, no. Taiko Yasuhiro is fine. Oh! So, you finally accepted it. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Thank you. Interesting. Ooh, my favorite part's coming up. And hey, see, where's my garbage? There, 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 there. I got an A. I wonder how heavy are the hammers? Well, apparently not as heavy, because since okay, I guess uh, eh, I'll just call her Celeste still. Since Celeste was able to pick up at least a hammer and whack him in the head with one strike instead of multiple strikes. Usually, for someone to at least die within one strike itself, usually has to take two things. Applied force and I think the amount of the mass. So it's, it's more or less how much force is involved with the bashing of the head. Because usually, to kill someone with a stroke of a hammer takes a lot of force to at least whack them in the head for at least to kill them, even if it's in the back of the head. Because if it's too light, they're just going to at least be knocked to the ground, not kill them. <sighs> Whatever. But the murderer is Celeste. Nice! Eh, we got an A. Not a B, but an A. No complaints on my side. Okay, Monokuma. I'm ready to begin. Whoa. Or, no, I suppose this is the end. Isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. It is indeed the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to vote. Okay? Okay. If you would, please locate your lever and cast your vote. And when the votes are tallied, who will become the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? All right. It's time for Monokuma votes. Today's winner is Celeste. You are found guilty. <laughs> it's basically a formality at this point, but once again, you're totally correct. The black in this time, the true like the true killer who devised the whole stinking scheme was Celeste Ludenberg, or most uh, precisely, uh, Taeko Yasahiro. Honestly, I lost. Well, that sucks. I guess trying to work with someone else was a mistake after all. Ifumi's uh, ineptitude was beyond my calculations. I knew it. So you really did approach Ifumi with this plan? <laughs> but how did you get him to agree? I can't imagine he would be ha happy to agree to commit to murder. I'm sure she relied on... She relied on her specialty line. <laughs> on my specialty? Don't make me laugh. I don't have to lie to him to agree. So then... Then... You, you, I mean, then did you use... You know? <sighs> 
I knew you'd figure out Kyoko. You're absolutely right. To get Hifumi to act as my accomplice, mm -hmm. I used her. For everyone who still, uh, is still left, I'll avoid mentioning it by name, but it was the one thing Hifumi and Taka were both super into. Does that mean... Is she talking about Alter Ego? Say what? What? What, 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 what? What are you talking about? Just a second. Don't interrupt. We're in the middle of a very important conversation here. <laughs> I'm totally out of the loop, as usual. How sad. In other words... Then, you're the one that stole it? Indeed. That's right. I see. And you used it to drag Yifumi into a plan you'd come up with? <laughs> <laughs> right again. Last night after we had our meeting about how it, how it disappeared, I paid Hifumi a little visit. Um... Oh, um, what are you doing here? Actually... I was hoping to talk to you alone. It was about the what was stolen. I know who did what? it. What? What? Are you okay with this? It was Taka. He stole it. <laughs> what? So then... And I have proof. Would you like to see? As it turned out, I found to, uh, found a use for the digital camera. I'd taken t I'd taken you know what to Taka's room earlier, and took a photo of it there. I deleted the picture as soon as I'd shown it to Hifumi, of course. Damnation! Grr, so it was him. But how did he do it? She was supposed to yell if either of us go closer. I mean, got close to her. <sighs> you are correct, which is why Taka forced me to steal it. Say what? What? As for me... Please forgive me. He... he threatened me. Oh, um... He, he did? As for me... He came to my room last night unannounced, then it's hard for me to even say. He abused me. What? What? Taka would never do such a thing! <sighs> and he... he took pictures. He said if I do not do as he asked, he would show them to everyone. So, I had no choice. Damnation! Th that's a crime! An absolute crime! I mean, I knew he'd gone a little crazy, but... Say what? I'd never imagined he would go that far! <laughs> it was amazing how completely he bought it. I can't express how enjoyable that was. I'm about to say something I never said before in my life. I'm going to... I'm going to kill him. I'm going to... F fucking kill him! Most unfortunate. Wait, please, if you go now, you'll be playing right into his hands. Mm -hmm. Huh? Actually. Taco was planning to use her to escape. And he was and he has made you his target. What? Escape? You don't mean <sighs> Taco was going to try to kill you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Indeed. And all so he can keep her to himself. Th that this bastard! Unforgivable. Bastard! 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 Honestly, can we allow him to continue with these barbaric acts? <laughs> Absolutely not. How could I? She. She. I swear, I will save her. I have to save her. Actually, then. Would you like to join with me? I mean, to join with me? It just so happens I have come up with a plan. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I have devised a way to reclaim what he has stolen and escape this dreadful school. <laughs> <sighs> and with that, it is complete. Mm -hmm. Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> He fully agreed without a second thought. <laughs> the effect that item had on him was remarkable. The power of love, even a love as twisted as that, can drive people mad, it would seem. Uh, um, you disgust me. I see. I have another question for you. Was that strange costume Hifumi's creation? Indeed. Yeah, it was a real pain in the butt, too. I asked him to do, like, to, I mean, I asked him to do was make something to hide a face and general body size. I had no idea he'd make something like that. Like that. But it's my fault for picking him in the first place. But... So why did you decide to like make me the suspect? Because you're stupid. Shit. 
That's so harsh. That's it? Let's see. And in that regard, I make the right choice. I'm so glad your su stupidity surpa like, surpassed my every, like, my every expectation. <laughs> Life must have been tough on your parents, though. <sighs> I feel like I would, I mean, I could cry. Well. But when you were explaining your plan to Hifumi, how did you explain the part about him playing dead? What she's asking is, what Hifumi's supposed to do after that, assuming you had actually let him live. Are you okay with this? And that's simple. After he did his part and pretend to be dead, once someone showed up, I told him... Ooh, give me a sec, I gotta burp. Ugh. I told him to say he'd be, uh, like he'd been uh, seriously wounded. He was on the verge of death, but he just barely held on. And he really believed that? <laughs> well, of course. That wasn't all there was to it. As I explained to Hifumi, the plan was, while you were all questioning him about that, had him, like, what ha like what had happened to him, I was going to murder someone else. At that point, Hifumi would have been, like, have an alibi so nobody could doubt him. I told him that, and he believed me. <laughs> All, all seems very straightforward, straightforward, stereotypical. <laughs> I just matched the lie to, I mean, to level the opponent. In fact, Hifumi ate it up. He believed the lie wholeheartedly, right up until the moment of his death. So in the end... So you plan to kill him all along. <laughs> but of course. There would have been no point in my plan if one who pretended to be dead did not end up dead himself. What the heck? How can a human life mean so little to you? Well... That's a non-issue. I simply did everything in my power to win. Don't be mean! Now you sound like Byakuya! I wonder about that. Now, he derives his pleasure from the thrill of the hunt. In that aspect, we are nothing alike. Why? Then, what made you take things this far? What the heck? Was it really just for money? Are you talking about the $10 million Monokuma offered us? That is a lot of money, it's true. But that's not there is to it. For the moment of our life here began, my only thought was, has been escape. But... But all along you've been saying how we have accepted living here. You little bitch! Obviously, that was a lie. <laughs> hey! I couldn't have taken it. I hated it from, from day one. More than anyone, anyone else in here. You little bitch. I wanted to get out of here. Every day was fresh torture. Do you want to know why, huh? This is fine. Because I had a dream. And accepting a life here would have meant nothing less than giving up on my dream forever. Honestly. And there's no way I could ever do that. In, in the underground world of gambling, I risk my life to make a metaphorical killing. As for me... And... It was all for the, that dream. And what was this dream of yours? Isn't it wonderful? To live in a European castle. Uh, c castle? <laughs> and gather all, like gather handsome men from all over the world to serve as my butlers slash bodyguards. I was going to make them dress up like vampires and satisfy my every need. God damn it, of course the whole gothic lolly thing. Once I attained that, I would have created a perfectly aesthetic world of dominance. This is fine. Living the rest of my life, there was my only dream, my only goal. And, that w and that's what life is all about. Uh, self gain. <sighs> Combined with my own winnings, Monokuma's $10 million would have made that dream a reality. I got right to the edge but there is nothing to be done unfor unfortunately my dream has been uh, has been shattered into the wind i mean to the wind still i don't have any regrets i pursued my dream to the very end so why would i just the worst you sound so passionate but you were really able to kill your own friends for it oh are you asking me to feel guilty that's a pointless endeavor I think nothing of sacrifice others for my own end. I feel nothing. Do you understand? That's all there is to me. That's what makes me complete. <laughs> <laughs>
Isn't it terrifying how different our values are? There's simply no room for understanding. What is this? Well, that's what we should be saying, and plus, how can you be so calm? Don't you realize you're about to die? Why are you why aren't you scared? <laughs> My ability to lie is unravel and is unrivaled, and I take pride in that. It's not just other people, I can even fool my own emotions. The conscious, I mean, conscience deceives the unconscious. And that's why you are not scared? Yes, indeed. That's right. I don't fear death. Kill me however you like. <sighs> but, you know, I could be reincarnated. If I had a choice then... Isn't it wonderful? I think I would like to come back as... Uh, Marie Antonio. Antonio. Hey. And then... I don't know who that is. Fuck it. You'd get a, you'd get executed then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was actual voicing. So Celeste smiled then, and when she did, it looked like a poor effort to force it. She claimed to be a good. I mean, the she claimed she could fool her own feelings, but that statement itself must have been her final lie. And that weak, fake smile, sh shut up, is what betrayed her. Shut up. Kills, kills, kills. Y'all done? Okay, let's get rolling. The blackened dis like the blackened disturbed the peace and must pay the price. Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment. Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment for her, the ultimate gambler. Let's give it it's punishment, punishment time! time! <laughs> I guess I'll let Kyoko hold on to this. Eh? What? This is... Will it really give you the hope you're looking for? I can't say I ever saw it that way. Eh? Which is why... Actually, it's not important. No, say it! Well then... Take care, everyone. Goodbye, Celeste. Perhaps we'll meet again. In another life. No, now I feel bad. Oh, well, she's dead. Game over. Celeste has been found guilty. Time for punishment. <laughs> Goodbye, Celeste. Oh. Burning of the ver uh the Versailles witch. Versailles. I cannot pronounce them. When you're so attracted to someone's voice. This is slow and painful versus everything else. Everything was fast and painful. For her, she gets to slowly suffer. With that. Oh, Celestia. Hashtag Celestia. Oh my god, no! Are you fucking serious? No! That's fucked up. They couldn't just leave her on fire? They had to use a car to run her the fuck over? Thank you, Monokuma. Thank you. You did your job. I hate you. And I love you at the same time. It's over. The third execution is over. Celeste, uh, Celeste's death is over. Celeste killed my friend, so I can't pity her, but... I also can't deny that at one point I considered her a friend too. And for him to just come along and... Isn't that just awful? Someone couldn't cut 
free of their regrets from the outside world, and so more people had to die. Extreme! You guys are still young. You need to place more value on your lives. What are you gonna do? Jeez. And here I thought you guys were gonna pass the torch of hope to the next generation. <laughs> Let me out of here! What? Uh, eh. What, what do I care about hope? I threw it in the trash if you just let me out of here. You're all the embodiment of hope, whether you like it or not. <laughs> and it's my destiny to knock you down one by one. It's sad, yes, but... I mean, yes, it is. But that reality just can't be avoided. Don't talk like you're not responsible. How long are you going to make us keep going through this? What do you want from us? God, I'm so sick of people asking me that. Give it a rest already. So anyway, Kyoko, did I see you uh, see you get some kind of key type object from Celeste? Hey, hey! So, uh, what's the deal with that? Wah -wah? Huh? What's the matter? So then, I'll answer your question if you answer mine. You... What did you do? What did you do to me? What? <laughs> hey. Answer me. What did you do to my body? Ooh, what? Oh exciting. man. Oh jeez. Oh man. Oh jeez. What do you mean? What did I do? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. Um. What was that just now? The mastermind did something to Kyoko's body? What does that mean? Hello. Okay, things are kinda awkward. I think it's about time I got out of here. Well. Meanwhile, you guys can go and uh, go on and join your school life. If you get lonely, give me a shout. Not that I'll do anything about it, of course. See ya later. <laughs> See ya. Monokuma disappeared, leaving us all depressed and in despair. Although, it wasn't all despair. There was one small hope. Hey, Kyoko. Monokuma already mentioned it, but... What's that key that Celeste gave so... you? So... It's most likely... It's a key to one of the dressing room... Like, uh, the dressing uh, room lockers. Huh? What? Then that means... Hm. Celeste probably hid it in there. Hey! I suppose it's time... It's easiest to miss what's right beneath your nose. Well then, we'd better go check. Indeed. Good idea. We left the courtroom and rushed to the dressing room. As we approached the dressing room, Kyoko looked back at us and said, Hey. Hey, give me a sec. I'm going on alone from here. Everyone else... Head to the dining hall. I'll check with you later. What? Why exactly are you going alone? So... Do you even have to ask? As she spoke, she glanced quickly at the surveillance camera. Come on! That's not what I mean. Why you? There's still risk... I mean, there's still risk of a spy, you know. Then I'll go too. What? You? Please, let me go! Standing here arguing is just going to draw more attention to us. Goodbye. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Thank you, Biakia. Well, then. Then it's up to you now. Yo! I'm going to dine hall, okay? Huh? So Makoto and Kyoko are going to... I mean, are going... together? <laughs> uh, does that mean what I think it means? Okay. Good luck, Makoto. Girls, I like her. Our total... I mean, our total pushover is when you show a little backbone. Jesus Christ, stop. I tried to forget what Hina said. Everyone headed to the dining hall, leaving me and Kyoko there alone. Shall we go? Well, shall we? Yeah. So then... We need to get into the locker. Kyoko took the key Celeste gave her and unlocked the locker and as the locker swung open, we saw... You're really cold. Good morning. <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it? It's safe, thank goodness. 
I heard her, I mean, I never heard Kyoko sound so relieved. It was like she was speaking from the bottom of her heart. I did what Celeste asked. I didn't say a word. I stayed quiet the entire time. Oh, and... I think I might be able to open the last set of files soon. Maybe as early as tomorrow. I'm doing my best, so please just wait a little while longer. <laughs> so, now we can officially say the case is closed. As far as this incident is concerned, sure, but... Can we take a second? I mean, can we take a second? Since we have this opportunity, I want you to be honest with me. Kyoko, please tell me. What were you trying to do on your own here at this- I mean, at the school? Mm -hmm. Is that why you wanted to come here with me? However... Regardless, that's not something you need to know right now. I don't need to know? That just makes me even more worried. What? Worried? Like, what happened during the investigation this time? You disappeared and we didn't see you again. Without warning, without explanation, when you do that... Indeed. It's only natural that they think I'm the mastermind spy, right? And you too. Right? No! I... I believe in you! What? You believe in me? Isn't it obvious? People, uh, people believe in their friends, right? That's why I want you to tell me. I want you to believe in me too. Because we're friends. I understand. It's true. Then maybe I can believe in you. Just a bit more. Then... That's fine. Fine, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why I've been disappearing. And where I've been going. You see... Ooh. Are we gonna actually get dialogue? What I heard from Kyoko then was... Well, frankly, it blew my mind. Right after I told Kyoko I believe in her, she told me a story that was, well, almost unbelievable. I decided that I had to confirm what she told me with my own two eyes. So I waited for nighttime to come, and when it did, I went into action. Correct. The boys' bathroom on the second floor doesn't have a surveillance camera or monitor in it. And in the storage closet there, way in the back. Okay, so... She said, way in the back of the boys' bathroom storage closet, but... Could Kyoko really be right about this? Alright, well... Hopefully, hopefully she's right. Uh... Oh! It's right there! It's just a normal storage closet as far as I can tell. The secret Kyoko told me about, could it really be hidden here? Well, here goes nothing. She said it was way in the back of the storage closet. But, I mean, seriously? Without thinking, I placed my hand on the back of the storage closet. And suddenly, as if I were, uh, if I were being yanked in... Ah! Gashunk. At the same time as I heard the sound, I fell through the wall. I had no idea what was going on. Bubum. Ow. It did. I had fallen through the back of the storage closet. Huh? It turned out the back wall was like a revolving door. I'd made my way to the other side. Just like Kyoko had said. Correct. In the boys' bathroom on the second floor, there's a storage closet. And way in the back of the closet, there's a secret room. So this is the secret room. But what's in here? Uh... Alright, there's a bunch of files that what look like volume after volume of yearbooks. They're all covered in dust. Looking at everything, one file at the edge of the bookshelf caught my eye. Hope's Peak Academy Student Regist uh, Registry? This is the only thing in here not covered in dust. Has someone been looking at it recently? I slipped the file into my hand. Before I had a chance to look at it, a slip of paper fell out of the file. And I turned my attention to it. What's this? You must not leave. 
We must not leave. That's kind of weird. I could understand if it, uh, if it said, like, I can't leave, but we must not leave? What is this? My head feels funny. This strange sensation. It's like deja vu. Those words, you must not leave. I've seen, seen them somewhere before, but I can't remember. What do I do? What don't I know? I... I... Ah! Tuxedo mask! Bonk. A strange sound rang through my head. I felt like it was shaking my brain back and forth. And then... Darkness. I don't understand what's happening. I don't know what started it. It's all over. And with that, I opened my eyes. I didn't know how long it had been. It had been. Now, Apparently something hit me and I lost consciousness. That's all I understood. The dull throbbing pain in my head proved that much at least. They took fucking everything. An empty bookshelf. Huh? Empty? Gone. It's all gone. The yearbook, the student registry, and... And even the chat. Now I gotta at least fucking bring it back. Bring it back to life. There we go. Even the note that had fallen on the floor. It's all gone? What does this mean? But my brain refuses to do any more work. The insistent pain in my head began to spread across the rest of my body. For now, I should go back to my room. Get some rest. My body was heavy with pain. My mind heavy with thought. I dragged myself back towards my room. Somehow I made it back to the first floor of the school. The farther I walked, the more I felt. Things are getting blurry. I can't see in front of me. I couldn't stop myself from collapsing right there. After that, mm -hmm. as if from a vast distance I heard a sound. It was faint, but undeniable. That sound, it's coming from the gym? As I desperately hauled my shaking frame towards the gym, the sound got stronger and stronger. going on? It can't be nothing. Here in the gym? What is it? I didn't make a sound as I opened the door to the gym. The sounds coming from inside me while only intensified that made that much more. Eh? Oh, that's some Sakura panties. Before me, there raged a battle beyond anything humanly possible. No, one side's not human, that's for sure, but... Regardless, I couldn't stop staring. I forgot to move or even breathe. Why, you? What do you think you're doing? I asked you a question. What's the meaning of this? you defy me. This wasn't part of the deal! Eh? It was Sakura? The deal? I've made a decision. I will no longer retreat. No longer compromise. No longer regret. I've made my decision. Eh? I'm going to resist you. 
Hmm. Okay. But <laughs> Damn it. You do realize what will happen if you go through with this, right? You haven't forgotten, have you? What I'm holding hostage? She's like Hakuman's daughter. Yes. <laughs> What am I looking at? What am I hearing? A uh, hostage? Then could it be the mastermind spy is Sakura? Chapter 3 The Next Generation Legend Stand tall, galactic hero. The end. <laughs> and now we only have seven. To be continued. Got an item! Super Robo Justice! Present. <laughs> awesome. Alright, do you want to save the save data? Of course. But, this ought to end off... Oh, uh, shut up. But, this ought to end off. Danganronpa. Trigger Happy Havoc for today. So, for now we're at least going to see... I mean, hopefully I'm going to see you guys next Saturday for a continuation. Or maybe if I'm... Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to at least do it next week. Uh, tomorrow, I'm actually going to work on editing stuff since I've been, like, seriously been unable to at least upload videos because of, like, emotional stuff. Blah, 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 blah. You know, like, just my mentality is kind of, like, shit right now. But I I'm trying to at least get myself to work on stuff because I, I, I have all this junk ready. It's just I haven't had the motivation to do it. But anyways, so in the next episode of Dangle Rupar... We might have figured out who the spy is. And something with Sakura. Well, for now. Thank you guys very much for at least watching this stream. I'm not going to at least go through my basic rant because I have a new outro. So for now, to be continued. Till then, have a great night, guys. It was fun. Um, I'm going to at least delete this stream and re-upload this. It should be up by tomorrow. So for those that missed out certain parts, go ahead and check it out whenever I have it up. Uh, yeah, so 